Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto. This will be the first video in a number of videos looking how ThorChain works. The reason why I'm creating this video is most of the reviews uh, videos that you see online just go through uh, mainly what's written on the website. I wanted to do something a little bit different and more concentrate on the mechanics of how ThorChain works so people can get a better understanding of the technology. There is good documentation uh, on the, the ThorDocs website here that goes through uh, you know, the technology and how things work uh, quite well. And also there is um, JP going through the technology in the Trust Bubble video here as well. Um, but that may not work for people that are visual learners, so I wanted to do something uh, a little bit different for those, those people. So what happens when you stake on BepSwap? Where does the money go? First, you need to understand that BepSwap does not hold any funds at all. It is purely a user interface um, for what is working under the hood, and there's a lot going on there. It doesn't hold your money in a smart contract, uh, traditionally like the Ethereum or stuff like that. So let's have a look um, how it works. So when you stake money in BepSwap, it goes through a TSS signing process. Uh, TSS meaning threshold signature scheme. In short, TSS is like a committee meeting where each node is like a member of the committee. And when a transaction is seen, the committee members need to appear at a certain time in order to kind of vote for that transaction. And two thirds is needed for that transaction to be valid. Now, in more specific terms, the nodes sign the transaction and then that allows it to proceed to the Asgard vault. Uh, it's in, in short, you could say um, it's like a multi-sig transaction, but it's kind of not. So instead of having a, um, you could say 25 and 36 multi-sig, um, the nodes each have a piece of the private key that is needed to construct the, um, the, the signature. In Currently inside of CastNet, there's 36 nodes, so hence you would need about 25 nodes in order to get the um, two-thirds majority. As I've said, only signed transactions can be moved into the Asgard vault. The reverse is also true. So to move for our transactional funds outside of the vault, it also needs to go through the TSS process and get validated before it can be withdrawn by a person. Asgard is not the only vault. There's also the Yggdrasil vault, sometimes referred to in short just as the YGG vault. And it holds about 25% of the funds inside of the network, but no more than 50% of the funds, and this is locked in code. The Yggdrasil vault uh, is used for swaps within uh, BEPSwap, but not for withdrawing money in and out of the Asgard vault. The Yggdrasil vault is distributed amongst uh, all the nodes and not collectively held. So, you know, 36 nodes, this vault is then distributed across 36 individual, um, individual addresses. Currently within ChaosNet, the Asgard vault and Yggdrasil vault hold Binance assets, or Binance chain assets, and that can be sourced by grabbing a node IP um, through the looking at the Chaos seed and CastNet seed and then having a look through uh, Midgard and finding out the actual address. And if you put that into a, the Binance Explorer, you'll be able to see all the assets under management. That does change every time uh, there's a churn, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a subsequent video. The main point I want to get across here is that Asgard holds the assets. Assets to move in and out needs to go through the TSS uh, process. And that does require two thirds of all the node operators to sign the transaction. You could say vote and approve, if you're thinking about like a committee meeting, in order for, for those funds to move in and out of the assets. Swaps don't go through this process. Swaps can go directly from um, the Yggdrasil vault. Uh, that does not require the TSS committee. And it comes through speed as well. This is much, much quicker. Um, doing a swap and then it is to draw money in and out of the vault. So I hope that helps with your understanding of ThorChain and how the network works. If you found this useful, please like the video and subscribe um, and feel free to put any comments down in the comments area about what you would like to know more of. 
um, and I will see what I can do. Till next time, thank you. Bye.